Okay, so ninjas fighting with swords on top of 18 wheelers flying down a highway. Come on, come on. You know I'm here for it, but let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my movie review for Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. So if you're subscribed to my channel, you already know, but if this is your first time here, I am a diehard fan of martial arts films. Those are my most favorite things of entertainment in the world. I mean, I just get giddy and excitement if I'm able to see a martial arts film on the big screen, especially if it has to do with ninjas. And like I said in my intro, with them fighting on swords down a highway on top of 18 wheelers. So to say I was excited about this film or looking forward to it would be an understatement. And when it comes to all the trailers and marketing material, I can't say that my excitement level was like Avengers Infinity War or Endgame. It wasn't that high, but I was just saying, okay, hey, you know, I, this movie looks fun. I'm not expecting it to win any Oscars or be one of the best films I've ever seen in a long time. I just want some good, decent action scenes with ninjas fighting, doing a whole bunch of cool ninja stuff, ninja banish, throwing stars, whatever. If you just give me that, I will be satisfied. Now, as far as if I am satisfied or not, we're going to talk about it. But first, let me tell you what this thing is all about. A G.I. Joe spinoff centered around the character of Snake Eyes. It's pretty simple. Now, the first thing that I absolutely loved about this film was the set designs and the costumes. It was absolutely beautiful. It was a true standout for me. The set design and costume department, they deserve two thumbs up. They really did make this film pop. It was just wonderful to see Tokyo, Japan, whether they was actually on location or or not, I mean, for me, it was just a nice sight to see like, wow, this is a beautiful landscape. I want to visit this place because I'm liking what I'm seeing on screen right now. And when it comes to like the ninja compound where Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow reside, where they originate from, I mean, it really felt real. It felt tangible. It did not feel like a set. This actually felt like a facility that's been around for centuries that's just been holding it down with all these secret ninja tactics behind behind closed doors underground that the rest of the world does not know about. And I think, think that is just like really, really cool. I, I just found that really, really fascinating. And that's one of the things on top of the costumes that made this film stand out to me as far as that's concerned. Now, also when it comes to the cast, I do like the cast. Right here at the top left, we have Henry Golding as a titular character of Snake Eyes, okay? He first popped on the scene for me a few years ago in the film Crazy Rich Asians. I did like that film. And when he was casting this role, I was like, okay, that, I think that's a good fit. I know Snake Eyes to be, you know, a white person from the comics or the original animation, but they're wanting to change it here. I really wasn't complaining there. I, I thought he was, you know, a good casting. And, you know, he did a pretty decent job within the role, too. We also have Andrew Koji as Tommy, a.k.a. Storm Shadow here on the top right. He did an even better job. Uh, I liked his presence or whatever. I like his voice. I am new to the show Warrior on HBO Max. I've heard nothing but good things. I don't know why I'm so late to the party with that, but I've seen the first episode of the first season and I did like it. And just kind of seeing his physicality in this film right here, it makes me want to go back and see uh, more of Warrior. You also have Hiroko Abi as Akiko. She did a good job. And pretty much everybody you see here, they look like they fit the role pretty well. Also, you have Iko Awais here as Hard Master. And we all know him from the Ray franchise, that Indonesian martial arts film where they're doing Salat, which came out a number of years ago. If you haven't seen those two films, please check it out. You won't regret it. Now, going up to this film, seeing the trailers and all the marketing material, it was concerning to me. I was kind of saying to myself, Okay, you have this character, Tommy, a.k.a. Storm Shadow, who is a part of this elite ninja assassin group who's been holding it down, like I said, for centuries, for hundreds of years. How is he exposed 
in this underground crime syndicate to where he's about to get his head blown off and Snake Eyes has to come save him. That really doesn't make sense. It, it would seem like Storm Shadow would have enough resources to where he wouldn't be in that predicament. However, after watching the film, they did explain that thoroughly and I liked the way it was executed as far as the plot and the story is concerned. I would say, okay, that answered my question. That really does address that. That makes a lot of sense and it really is believable. So I have to give credit where credit is due there. And also like the overall story in the world, the universe that this origin story builds for Snake Eyes and for future spinoffs and sequels within the G.I. Joe universe. I do like it. There's a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of story to tell and this film is a decent and or good foundation to start those things off and so whether or not i like this or not it does leave promise for the future and a ton of room for the filmmakers to improve on any of the missteps they may have had in making this current film now as far as the missteps are concerned and all the things that rub me the wrong way there are a lot of them and maybe more than the things that I did like, unfortunately. And the first has to do with Snake Eyes' origin. As far as why is he alone? Why is he a loner? Why doesn't he have a family? Early on in the film, it made sense, but they tried to circle back around to that later on in the film and it just didn't do anything for me and kind of was jarring when they brought it back it just didn't really fit in the film the way i thought they wanted it to also in this film we see that storm shadow recruit snake eyes to come into his ninja compound but before that snake eyes already knows how to fight he may already know how to fight better than the ninjas without any proper training and that really doesn't make sense to me either i was really looking forward to a character of snake eyes and having to know how to fight to a decent level, you know, because he had to survive on his own living off the streets. But when he is recruited to the ninja group, the ninja camp, I mean, it just takes it on to just the next level. And that's just not the case. I still think to this point that he's able to fight better than some of the ninjas in this movie, which makes no sense. That's disappointing. And when it actually comes to the ninja training, there's really none of it at all in this movie. I mean, there is one cool ninja scene to where they're training to where it reminds me of old 80s ninja movies where they're running through the forest and through the mountaintop doing all types of various tasks but in this film it only lasts for like 10 seconds like as soon as it starts off i'm like okay hell yeah we're, we're here this is what i'm here for i'm excited then it cuts away to something else i'm like no that's what i came to see is ninjas doing cool stuff not just flashes of it ever so often and that's really really disappointing and when it comes to the fighting i mean of course i want great characters and a plot that makes sense and world building and character development and all that good stuff but i come to see some ninjas fighting their ass off with swords and all types of weapons i want to see the part in the trailer to where they showcase so much with these ninjas fighting on 18 wheelers going down the highway and guys that's the most disappointing aspect of the entire movie is the fight scenes the choreography you cannot see the action you cannot see the fights and it is so irritating the director of this film by the name of robert shawinke if i'm pronouncing that correctly i'm sorry if i butchered it his is, this is his filmography he did r.i.p.d he also directed red and i saw red which was pretty decent he also did the divergent series insurgent and you can see the rest right here the tom traveler's wife i don't know what he was thinking but the places where he put the camera was all wrong when it comes to the action why can't we simply get the camera pulled back watching two deadly assassins go at it with all their might showing all the wonderful choreography that you guys worked on during pre-production no instead you want to be zoomed in this close while the audience is barely able to make out anything or cut away every other second to hide any choppy editing or choreography that wasn't that great to begin with i mean i found myself so frustrated there was just one scene where there's red neon lights in the background where characters are standing off with their blades like you like oh man it's about to go down and then as soon as the fight starts the camera cuts away to other characters doing stuff that you don't care about and you can still hear the fight you can still hear all the swords clanging and clashing but you can't see the fight i'm like what is going on why would you choose to do this it's just very frustrating and irritating and like i said disappointing I mean, and there, there is not one fight scene in this entire, if I was like, imagine 
I, I won't even buy this movie. But let's just say, for instance, it was on TV for free and I can fast forward it to whatever point I want it. There is not one fight scene in this whole movie to where I would fast forward and watch it over again for my enjoyment because it was just that badass. I can do that with a ton of comic book movies or action movies, even if I don't like them. If I don't like the story, I can say to myself, I don't like the story, I don't like the characters, but that action scene was badass. Let me go watch a good 5, 10, or 15 minutes of that. I cannot do that with any film or any scene in this movie that has to do with fighting, and that really just hurts my heart and soul. Also, popular characters are always like Peter Mensah as Blind Master and Eco Ways. I don't know about this guy right here, Peter Mensa, but it's just something about him that looks badass. And it's him cast as the blind master. I thought he was really finna just go to work within this film. And he does for a brief moment, but like I said, it's brief. You know, I, I don't want to see snippets of a great action. I want to see a large abundance of it. That's what we came to see. And also, Ikoi Waste, the guy from the raid, I mean, he doesn't really show his talent in this thing either. I mean, these are things that got me excited about seeing this movie and they just did not deliver on the goods and it leaves me pissed. Also, gosh, Storm Shadow is an idiot. He is dumb in this movie. He is far too trusting. I'm not spoiling anything. You see this in the trailers. He's like, oh my gosh, you saved my life. I want to recruit you and bring you back to my home that's been a standing ground for 600 years with all these secrets. We don't want to expose to anybody, but I just met you and thank you so much. Even if he didn't meet him, he still should trust. And I'm saying to myself, whoa, dude, you, you, your, your prerequisites to get people to come to the crib are, are ridiculously low. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, my goodness gracious. I mean, this is just the oldest trick in the book. We've seen this ton, a ton of times to where a character will save another character's life as a front just so they can be a Trojan horse and sneak into their administration, their facility, their camp, their compound. But Storm Shadow is supposed to be elite and all this and lead the clan and all this and with all this knowledge. He, 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 he doesn't think of that. He just loves Snake Eyes so much. Like, oh, my God, he saved me. So I have to welcome him. To me. That's just the dumbest decision in the world. It just really doesn't make sense to me. And also with Snake Eyes characters, well, I'm just not in love with them. I mean, we're supposed to root for him because his name is in the title and he is the protagonist of this film. But there's a certain twist to his character where I just wasn't on board with and it's really difficult for me to approve. But like I said, guys, the biggest scene in this film is the shaky cam and it being pulled up and cutting away every other second. I wanted to like this film. I wanted to love it, but I, I, I just don't. I didn't hate this film. There were some moments of it where it was boring, but every time, you know, it lifted me up like, okay, hey, we, we finna have a good scene right here. This looks like some promise. It looks like a payoff. At the end of it, I was like, okay, that was okay. And, you know, I found myself sighing a few times throughout the whole movie. And, and that's just not, you know, what I want to experience when I'm at the theater. So guys, I really didn't enjoy this film and I'll give my rating towards the end, but that is just my opinion, okay? All this is subjective. You may have loved this film while I didn't and that's perfectly fine. My opinion is no more valid than yours. If you like the video, please give me that thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on social media. I would really appreciate it. And if I had to rate Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins out of a 1 out of 10, I think I'm going to give this one a 5.5 .5 out of 10. Yes, a 5.5 .5 out of 10. A passing grade for me is a 6 out of 10 or above. And this one barely misses the mark. Has so much potential to be great, but it's just an overall letdown disappointment. But guys, again, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.